There is no other option. I will always get what I want. I might not get it right away, but I will eventually get what I want. If I want to grow a, a multi-million dollar business, I'll grow a multi-million dollar business and I won't give up until I get it. Today, we're going to be talking about what it takes to get into creating the mindset of a winner. And I'm going to go over specifically the five different pieces that you need in order to create the mindset of a winner. And we're going to talk about two of the greatest athletes, some of the most cutthroat, hardcore winners that I've ever seen. And we're going to talk about Kobe Bryant. We're going to talk about Michael Jordan today. And um, this isn't just the two of them. This translates, I think, to a lot of extremely high performers, whether that happens to be in athletes. There's a lot of hardcore athletes that have these exact same five pieces, but also I see these exact same pieces in many different ways in some of the most successful entrepreneurs in the world as well. So not only will it help you with sports, it'll also help you with life, athleticism, whatever it is that you want to do, becoming an entrepreneur, all of those things. So we're going to talk about the five differences uh, between a mindset of a winner and just the average person. And at the end, I'm also going to teach you how to use the chemicals inside of your brain to make you work harder for what you want and to make you more of a winner. Before we dive into those five pieces and the five things I want to cover with you though, there's one thing that's very apparent that I've come to realize. I've taught tens of thousands of people over the years and there's a big difference between someone who's a winner and someone who is not a winner. Winners win, losers lose. That's what I always say. And I don't mean losers in a bad way. I just mean some people just have the mindset that is a losing mindset and in turn, it's going to make them lose. It's not something that you're born with. This is a mindset that can be shifted. If it's a mindset, you can shift any mindset at any point in time. It just depends on if you have the right tools to do so. And it's really more than anything else about the way that you look at things and the way that your life is. So the five pieces to having the mindset of an absolute winner. The first thing that I have found with people who are just crazy winners in life, number one, is that they are absolutely obsessed, like legitimately obsessed. One of the very first books that I ever read was called The Five Major Pieces to the Life Puzzle by Jim Rohn. He says, when you figure out what it is that you want in life, it has to become your magnificent obsession. When you look at someone like Michael Jordan, winning every single game, it wasn't winning a championship that was his, his obsession. It was winning every single game and in turn won a lot of champions because, championships because of it. Kobe Bryant, the exact same thing. Just hardcore, had to win every single game, had to win every single play. And there was a, an interview that I was watching with Kobe Bryant and he was talking about his hard work and how obsessed he was with playing the game of basketball. And he said, I just never wanted to say after I retired that I wish I could have done more. And how many people out there get to the end of their lives and just wish they could have done more, wish they would have achieved more, wish they would have impacted more people's lives, wish they would have just brought more of themselves out to the world. And their whole life has been built around how they can become better. So perfect example. And I'll give you more examples as we go through this, but their whole life was built around how they can become better. If basketball for them was the obsession, right? Then it's their fitness, it's their nutrition, it's their sleep, it's the beds that they have, it's the couches that they have, it's the amount of water that they drink, it's the trainers that they have. You know, they say LeBron James says spends $1.5 million a year just specifically on his body. Their whole life is built around how to become better. You know, their, their systems of, they still want to hang out with their family, but their family is built into how can I use uh, my time wisely when I'm with them and how can I build in my basketball schedule, my practice schedule, my workouts and all of that into my family time to make sure that all of these pieces support the number one goal of winning every single game that I go into. And people would think, and I understand how this could be, is some people will think to themselves, this obsession would take time away from their children, their children would suffer from it. And it could be that way. But if you look at, at both of them in, in their family life, you realize that because of the way that they were and how obsessed they were with their craft, it actually made their family lives better in a lot of different ways as well. Kobe Bryant says when I was listening to him talk about this is that when you decide that your life is built around this one thing, so his life was built around basketball, your life could be built around, you know, impacting the world, becoming a coach, building a business that, you know, cures hunger around the world. I don't know what it is for you. When you build your entire life around that and that is your one mission in life, 
He says, if you think of it that way, then your world literally becomes your library. Every single aspect of what it is that you do, you pull from it so that you can become better in everything that you do. So the first thing is, is they are absolutely obsessed. Their end goal is their magnificent obsession. So my question to you with that being said, is if you wanna become a winner and step into having a winner's mindset, what is your magnificent obsession for your life? That's the first thing. The second thing is they don't see any other option except for winning. They don't see any other option. Michael Jordan said, I never lost, I just ran out of time. The thing that I, I realized about myself is that I was obsessed with playing the game of basketball and trying to become better when I was a kid. But the thing that was messed up about me was my mindset. This is something that I grew up and learned about myself after I stopped playing basketball. So I played basketball all the way into high school, got into sales when I was 19, 20 years old and started reading and learning. And I realized in that process of self-development that my mindset when I played sports was actually messed up because it was always, I was always more negative than I was positive as a kid. And I would think to myself when I was shooting a shot, I hope I don't miss, right? Versus I will make it. Now think about your life and how many times you hope that something doesn't happen versus I will do X, Y, Z. I will make sure it gets done, right? So where do you live your life? Do you live it more in the negative side of I hope I don't, or I hope this doesn't happen. I hope blah, 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 blah. Or is it I will make it happen on the positive side. Winners don't see any other option. They're going to win. That's all that it is. I did an episode not too long ago on manifestation where I was talking about for me, when I decide something, and this is how I can show you what I said earlier, that it's not that you're stuck in your mindset. You can shift your mindset at any point in time. For me, when I want something now, there is no other option. I will always get what I want. I might not get it right away, but I will eventually get what I want. If I want to grow a, a multi-million dollar business, I'll grow a multi-million dollar business and I won't give up until I get it. That's the difference is that a lot of people who are winners, they make it their magnificent obsession. They become obsessed with it and they don't see any other option. They're just going to get it no matter what. And they're on this road for as long as it takes to get it. Even if it's to the last day that they're alive, they're going to be pushing through. People who are on, I guess this, you could say the quote unquote loser side is they start going for something, they're excited about it, and then they get a little bit of, I guess you could say, they get a little bit of, uh, you know, roadblocks. And those roadblocks start to make them think that, oh, maybe this isn't for me. Maybe this is a wrong path. Maybe I'm not the right person for this. Maybe I'm not qualified yet. Maybe I should work harder and then try this again. Winners don't see any other option. They will get what it is that they want. So my question to you is which mindset do you have? Is it, I hope I don't, or I hope this doesn't happen, or I'm going to make it happen. So number two is winners don't see any other option except for winning. Number three, winners know that they're gonna mess up. They understand that messing up is part of the process. No matter how many times they mess up, their mindset never wavers. This is the biggest point. If you think about this, they can miss the game-winning shot tonight and they'll still wanna take the last shot tomorrow. Why? Because they know that they just missed a shot. They're gonna miss tons of shots. It's like that famous Michael Jordan quote, he says, I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games. 26 times I've been trusted to take the game-winning shot and missed. I failed over and over and over and over again in my life, and that's why I succeed. They know they're gonna mess up. They know they're gonna miss shots, but no matter what, they will not let their mindset waver no matter how many shots they, how many shots they miss. If they have a terrible night tonight, it's not gonna mess with their night tomorrow. Right? They know they won't be perfect, but that won't change their mindset about themselves. Do you want to know why? Because they know they've put in more work than anybody else, so nobody else is more qualified to take that shot than them. That's the biggest difference. They know that there's no one else in the gym at the same time that they are. They know no one's putting in more work than them. Messing up is part of the process. And if you mess up, your mindset, sh mindset should never waver. You're going to get whatever it is, no matter how long it takes. That's what the mindset needs to be around whatever it is that you want to succeed. What is it that you want to succeed at? That's number three. Number four is they surround themselves with winners. A lot of people don't know this or didn't know this until Kobe Bryant died and Michael Jordan started speaking about it. But Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant talk about this. If you go back and look at some of their interviews, I looked at a lot of different interviews as I was researching through this. Michael Jordan 
considered Kobe Bryant his little brother, and Kobe Bryant considered Michael Jordan his older brother. They would, you know, there's there's stories of how, you know, Michael Jordan would be woken up at three o'clock in the morning because Kobe Bryant would call him up and ask him questions about, you know, doing a turnaround jump shot and fadeaway. And he was teaching his daughter of how to do a fadeaway. And he asked when he was, you know, she was 11 at the time, and he calls up Michael Jordan. He's like, hey, what were you doing at 11 years old to try to fix your jump shot? Kobe Bryant had something called Goat Mountain. Goat stands for greatest of all time. So he had something called Goat Mountain. And those are, those are the people that he considered the greatest of all time to play basketball. And he goes through and he lists them. He says Michael Jordan was on it. Magic Johnson was on it. Larry Bird was on it. Oscar Robinson, Dr. J, a few other people. And he only surrounded himself with those people. And, and the person who was interviewing him asked him, well, did some of your relationships waver as you joined the NBA because you started to hang out with you know these other people a lot more than you hanged out with everybody else? And he said, yeah. They did, but the people who knew me and the people who loved me knew that this was my obsession and becoming the greatest that's ever played, it was my obsession. And if they love me enough, they should love me enough to be able to go off and pursue this for as long as I need to, to make the greatest version of myself that I possibly can. So they surrounded themselves with winners and anybody else who didn't seem like a winner was automatically outside of their circle. So if you think about that, Whatever it is that you're trying to win at, whether it's sports, whether it's painting, whether it's your music, whether it's you know your profession, becoming an entrepreneur, are you surrounding yourself with people who are winners, winners, the people who have the exact same mindset of you, of I'm gonna do whatever it is that I need to do in order to get where I need to go, or is it like, oh, my mindset's wavering and you know I'm, I'm doing this one day and then the next week I've started this other business and then two weeks later I've started another business. Who are you surrounding yourself with? Because if the greatest of all time are hanging out with other people that could be in the contention for the greatest of all time, shouldn't you start thinking about the people that you surround yourself with and if they're fostering your growth and trying to make you better or if they're trying to you know not even on purpose just kind of keep you in the exact same spot that you're in so they surround themselves with people who are absolute winners and number five they have hardcore self-discipline now i told you i was going to teach you a trick about your brain and the chemicals inside of your brain how to use those chemicals inside of your brain to make you work harder and to get what you want this is that point. Have you ever heard the phrase, it's about the journey, it's not about the destination? I'm sure you have, right? It's a you know, corny cliche, right? But cliches are usually cliches because they're true. And it is true, it is about the journey, not the destination. And let me explain why that is. So inside of your brain, here's the trick. There's a chemical called dopamine. And dopamine is the chemical inside of your brain that makes you feel good. You know, the, the problem with this is that if you don't understand how this works, your dopamine systems can be hijacked by anything else that's around you. Facebook and Instagram, all social media, they hijack your dopamine reward systems. Gambling, if you go into a, a uh, you know, any, any casino in the world, they are made to hijack your dopamine reward systems. So dopamine is called the chemical of motivation, the chemical that makes you foc on, focus on the external world. So serotonin, people always get serotonin and dopamine mixed. Serotonin is the internal one that makes you feel pretty good, makes you feel pretty happy about what you do have. Dopamine is the one that makes you motivated to go out and get more. Most people, here's a secret, they only want to achieve a goal, say winning a championship or becoming a millionaire, and they're not happy until they get that goal. And that means what they're doing is they're actually delaying the process of, of actually delaying the dopamine release inside of their brain. And if you think about it, if I'm not happy until I hit the goal of X, then I'm delaying myself from ever getting the dopamine that I want to until I get to my goal of X, winning the championship, becoming a million or whatever it is. But dopamine is the chemical of motivation. So why would I wait until the end of the time where I actually achieve that goal before I allow myself to get that dopamine? Wouldn't I want it to be during the process if it's the chemical of motivation, wouldn't I want dopamine to be released multiple times every single day throughout the time that I'm trying to get to that goal? Yes. So instead of celebrating the championship or becoming a millionaire, what you do is you celebrate the process of hitting whatever habits or routines that you need to in order to get you to that place. So for instance, Famous thing about Kobe Bryant is that he would wake up at 4 a.m. every single morning since he was in high school to play basketball. Every single morning. And there's also something really famous about him when, when they won a championship one of the days. So he has, uh, Tim Grover is, was Michael Jordan's trainer, physical trainer, and also um, 
also Kobe Bryant's as well. And one of the things that was famous about him is that Kobe Bryant won the championship. After winning the championship that night, goes and sees Tim and says, all right, I'll see you at the gym at 4 a.m., right? And Tim's like, you just won the championship. Why would, why would I see you at 4 a.m.? Like, go celebrate. He's like, nope, I'm going to see you at the gym at 4 a.m. Why? Because although he wanted to win the championship, the championship was actually just a part of, was the end goal of the process. And what happened was they fell in love with the process of working to become who they wanted to be. And so I'm sure Kobe Bryant, without him knowing, probably had dopamine reward systems built around being at the gym at 4 a.m. You know, him celebrating to the fact that I know there's no other basketball player in the entire world that's up right now working on their craft, and that means that I'm going to be better than every single person. When you think that, a little bit of dopamine gets released. That gives him more motivation and more drive to become even better. If you want to learn more about this, you can actually go to my interview with Andrew, uh, Dr. Andrew Huberman, who is you know, a neurobiologist out of Stanford, where we talk about these dopamine reward systems and how to let dopamine be released throughout the process not to the end goal because what you want to do is you, you've heard winners and you know greater some of the greatest athletes say you have to fall in love with the process what they mean is that they didn't even realize it most likely is that they're celebrating waking up before anybody else getting done with the gym shooting a thousand shots whether they miss most of them or not shooting a thousand shots getting done what they say they wanted to get done allowed their brain to release the dopamine which then made them even more motivated because that's what they were wanting to do and they attach the dopamine reward system to the process not the end result but when you attach it to the process you become more motivated to then go into the process which then makes you more likely to then hit the end goal see how that works so you can win a championship, but you still know that waking up at 4 a.m. the next day to practice is the thing that makes you the most excited because you're working at becoming who you want to be. And a big part of this that I think a lot of people miss is positive self-talk. Very rarely, actually, I don't even know if I can think of one person who is an extremely, one of the greatest athletes ever that wasn't really good at talking to themselves. And when you talk really good to yourself, what happens? Your brain releases a little bit of dopamine because it's like saying, hey, you did good. We're doing good. We're on the right path. You know, you showed up at 4 a.m. You're here. You did what you're supposed to. You took a thousand shots. You do what you're supposed to. You were at the office at 5 a.m. before anybody was, before the sun even came up. It's that little bit of dopamine that you need to get you, I don't want to say addicted to the process, but kind of addicted to the process, which then makes it more likely that you are going to achieve the end result. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you want to learn even more about mastering your mind, click right here and watch this video as well. I don't lose. Winners win. And when you step into becoming a winner and you have that winner's mentality, losing doesn't exist.